Good morning, Anthem. Welcome to chapel. Uh, it's another week here at Anthem, and I want to thank you all uh, for making our open house last week uh, such a great event, even though it was online. I hope you got to uh, show your family uh, what's going on in your classroom through each class page. And if you haven't, for some reason, had the chance to do that, I encourage you to uh, talk to your parents uh, tonight and say, hey, let's go to our website. We can find our class page and you can show them everything that's going on in your classroom. Uh, well, we are here uh, today. We're going to be uh, resuming talking about uh, different characters in the Bible. But first, we're going to worship together. So uh, let's do that and I'll see you in just a minute. You reach down from the sky Leaving heaven's throne I was meant to die You wouldn't let me go The riches of your grace I could not afford my guilt has been erased Now I'm forever yours Oh, what a price you pay Trading the highest place You laid down your crown for me How great a king Yours is the victory Oh, what a price you paid Trading the highest place You laid down your crown Great 
for all you are and all you've done. We lift you up, lift you up for all you are and all you've done. We lift you up, lift you up. Well, today we are going to be looking at a character that's found way back near the beginning of the Bible. Many of you have probably heard of him. His name is Moses. Now, Moses was a kind of a big deal, right? He's found uh, in the book of Exodus. He freed God's people from Egypt. He freed them from slavery. And there are a ton of uh, just crazy events that happened in the life of Moses that we could look at in detail. But today we're just going to be looking at kind of an overall picture of the life of Moses to see what we can learn from his life and what happened through him. Uh, Moses was actually raised by Egyptians. And Egypt back in the thousands and thousands of years ago was this major, major world power. I mean, they were one of the strongest uh, empires around. And so Moses was raised actually in kind of a, by like higher up uh, Egyptians. But he was born as a Hebrew. He was part of God's people, but because the, his people were being persecuted and because he was actually gonna be killed as a baby, his parents sent him off floating down the river, hoping that somebody would find him. And sure enough, an Egyptian found him and decided to take him and raise him as her own. So Moses was raised in these royal courts. And so he had a good education. He had um, you know, probably military training. He ate all the best food. And Moses, as he is going out and kind of, you know, being an Egyptian, he finds out that he is actually a Hebrew. And so he sees some of his fellow Hebrews were, who were enslaved at this point. They were slaves of Egypt. He sees one of them being mistreated and he goes and he confronts this Egyptian who is mistreating his fellow Hebrew and he actually kills him. And he's afraid for his life as he it's like, what have I done, right? I'm, I'm a Hebrew and I've just killed this Egyptian. Even though he had probably some status in society, he knew that he was going to get in trouble for this. So Moses flees, right? Moses flees and he runs away and he leaves Egypt. And later in the story, Moses comes back to Egypt and he actually confronts Pharaoh and there's the story of all the plagues and all this crazy stuff happens. And he actually ends up leading God's people out of Egypt. He's kind of this uh, redeemer, right? He, he, like, he gets all the people, he takes them out of slavery, and now they can go find their own land. Now that's a cool part of the story, right? And the beginning is a cool part of the story. But what I wanna suggest I talked about this a couple years ago, actually, in chapel. What I want to suggest is that the middle of the story is actually what is most important for our lives. The beginning of the story can be exciting, right? When we begin a new project, we begin something new, uh, a new class, a new grade, whatever it is that's new, a new hobby in our lives, that's exciting. We're starting something. The end can be exciting. When we complete a grade at the end of the school year, or we graduate from Anthem, right? If you're in eighth grade, the end is exciting. You have this accomplishment. But the middle is actually where we spend most of our time. And the middle can seem boring. The middle can seem kind of lame. But the middle is where we build our character. We build ourselves up so that we can get to the end. In Exodus chapter 2, as it's talking about Moses fleeing from Egypt, it says, Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. 
So it just gives us this glimpse of he leaves Egypt and he goes and sits down by a well. Well, turns out we don't have a ton of information of what happened between that and when he goes back to Egypt to free his people. But we do know that it's about 40 years. So 40 years go by after he kills the Egyptian and leaves Egypt. 40 years he had to wait until God finally called him back to Egypt to free his people. That's a long time, right? If we were waiting for something for two years, three years, four years, five years, we might think, you know what? It's never going to happen. God's forgotten me, or this is just not meant to be in my life. But Moses had to wait 40 years. And during that time, he just had to do the best with what he was given. And so the same is true for you and me. When we are starting something, it can be exciting, but it's that journey after we start to get to the end. That's where we have to focus on details. We have to focus on God. We have to focus on just keeping our eyes towards the end where we can finally accomplish something. And it's in those details that we can make good choices or bad choices that will ultimately affect the end of our story. So, what can we learn in our own lives as we think about this idea of, of kind of being stuck in the middle and living most of our lives in the middle, in, in kind of bland, non-exciting days? What can we learn from that? how we work hard in the middle or how we work not hard <laughs> that can affect the end when we're kind of right now we're, we're almost near the end of the third quarter but we've got a whole other quarter to go so in this semester of school we're kind of in the middle and we can kind of lose steam right we can kind of lose energy to, to finish strong but what we do every day, how we choose to finish our assignments, treat our classmates, uh, listen and respect our teacher, how we choose to do those things now, even when we're tired and we just kind of want to get to the end, that will affect how well or how poorly we end our school year. How we treat others will affect the end. When we get to the end of the school year, or even your end, end of your time here at Anthem, when, we, when people look back on you, we talked about this last week when we talked about love, when people look back on you, when they remember, hey, I remember such and such in that class, will they think, he treated me well, she treated me well? Or will they think, they didn't treat me well? And so I really, I don't, really don't want to have anything to do with them, perhaps. How we treat others now, each and every day, and each and every little moment, will affect the end. Finally, we have to be patient in our lives. Moses had to be really, really patient as he waited to see, what is God going to do with my life? He was in Midian for 40 years. He had a great, awesome upbringing. He was powerful. In Egypt, he had it all. He had to leave that for 40 years before he finally went back and God did this amazing thing through him. So we have to be patient with what unfolds in our lives. God doesn't promise just to give us everything we want and to do crazy, amazing things through us um, each and every day, right? We would get worn out if we had to, had to do crazy, things each and every day, but God does have a plan for each of our lives. And as we trust Him, as we are patient with His plan, um, we can kind of rest in the fact that God will use us to do what He wants to do in our lives if we just are patient and we trust Him. We see that in the life of Moses. So. As we go this week, I want you to be thinking about what middle you might be in right now. 
it's the middle of this semester, right? We're all there. So that's something we all have in common. How are we going to make choices each and every day in the middle of this time that will affect how well or how poorly our school year will end? Maybe you've taken up a hobby and you were really excited when you started it, but now it's kind of felt like you're in the middle and you haven't achieved what you want to achieve, but you're still working at it and you wonder, should I even keep going? Yes, yes you should. Make the decision to work hard every day towards your goal. And finally, if you feel like God is calling you to do amazing things in your life and you're excited and you just say, I want to do it now, be patient. Think about where, how can I be patient this week, this month, this year, uh, so that God can eventually do what he wants to through me. So uh, that is all I have for you today. Let's make good decisions. Let's be obedient in the middle. Let's treat others well in the middle. And let's work hard every day, even when we're in the middle. Have a great day.